good morning. Uh, flat plane fool here with another morning commute. Uh, you can probably tell it sounds a little different this morning. Uh, we're not going to hear any of those sweet V8 noises on the way in because we're going to get hit by a hurricane today, so I'm driving the old Jeep. Uh, I, don't, I don't mean to call you old. Uh, this is my uh, 2013 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. Uh, it's an unlimited. It's the four-door. We are soccer moms. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I love this thing. It's stick shift. It's a great car. Um, it's been great. Haven't had any reliability issues for the whole time I've owned it. Um, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. So anyway, uh, talking about that, I, <laughs> I kind of picked a fight on one of 1320's posts last night, um, talking about the Mark V Supra and, you know, how quickly uh, Geo and the guys down at um, Real Street got this uh, one of those things down into the tents just seemingly like what it's been out for like two weeks two months sorry not weeks um, so like two months ish and they got a Supra down into the tents already and everybody you know they're comparing it to the Mark IV there's a um, you know those guys <laughs> have the six second Supra as well, so they got uh, the Mark IV. So they have their 10 second Mark V next to their six second Mark IV um, in a picture and everybody's, you know, uh, cutting up and having a good time. But the thing I wanted to point out is that everybody loves the Mark IV and it's a great car, don't get me wrong, especially now. Um, and you hear the tone of seriousness in that, right? So, um, I've, I've been in love with the Mark IV Supra since I tried to get my dad convinced that a uh, 93 hardtop six-speed twin turbo with no wing in, uh, I can't even remember the color, but it's that, that um, kind of forest green color. It was gorgeous. And, you know, I told him, yeah, dad, you know, it's just a three-liter six-cylinder. It'll teach me how to drive stick. Yeah, yeah, it'd be a great first car. And, my dad, not being any kind of sucker, uh, gave her hell in second gear and the turbos kick in and this car was already, what is it, BPU-1 or whatever, or BPU-plus is what they called it back then. Um, so it had, uh, um, you know, no cats on the car and an intercooler. And um, she took off like a bat out of hell and dad was like, nope, nope, nope. Um, but... So, Mark IV Supra, uh, it was easy as pie to make 450 horsepower, 500 horsepower, depending on how you did your basic performance upgrades, BPU. Um, but everybody forgets how crappy everything else was about uh, EFI from the 90s. Um, you know, back in the 90s, you went above that, so the stock ECU could pretty much handle it up to 450, 500 horsepower. Um, you go beyond that, and you had to start doing some weird shit. You either had to do a piggyback system uh, to control the car, and those were great until they had a hiccup, and you went back to the stock tune and blew the hell out of your engine. Um, so, you know, a little less than great. Or you called up, and everybody's going to laugh because uh, that Fast and the Furious line, you know, MoTeC system, uh, ECU, blah, 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 blah. So, um... Motec was one of the leaders in uh, aftermarket ECUs back then, not necessarily because they had the best ECU on the market, it's because they could figure out what all stupid sensors your stock computer was running and set up their ECU to work with them. Um, other than that, you had to find a, a, a application specific ECU and that was hard to find. And Anyway, it just wasn't as good as it is now back then. Um, there's a reason why everybody has a Supra, uh, swaps out to a different ignition system, runs uh, LS coil packs, uh, controls it with a standalone ECU. It, it is, it's way better than it was back then. So anyway, these guys were, I basically said on that post, I was like, yeah. Uh, I remember I said 
that the Mark V Supra got into the 10s a lot faster than the Mark IV. Um, and started joking that the Mark IV Supras, even when you did get all that stuff figured out, the, the strong transmission was the six-speed back then. The automatic transmission didn't hold horsepower. Nobody made torque converters for it. Um, it. It just didn't work very well in a performance application. So everybody was building the manuals. And then compound that with the fact that um, the good turbos back then were about as good as the Chinese turbos now, maybe not even as good as the Chinese turbos now. Um, so you had this six-speed, three-liter car, and every time you shifted gears, you fell out of boost. So there were Supras, and I remember, I mean, like the top Supras, you'd see 1,100 horsepower Supra, and the guy would cut an 11-second quarter mile or a high 10. Um, it would be at 158 miles an hour, so you knew he was actually making that 1,100 horsepower, but every time he shifted, he fell out of boost, he, he, and nobody really figured out how to launch on the independent rear suspension back then, and nobody was making widely available solid axle swaps for him, so, um, but this kid starts saying stuff like, well, I, I remember when the Supras came out and they were crushing Fox bodies, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, well, yeah, there was like two years there where um, the Fox body didn't have any great aftermarket engine options. And people found out that if you put a turbo on it, made more than about 550 horse to the wheel, because you were also making 600, 650 foot pounds of torque, uh, you'd crack the stock block in half. Um, <laughs> and there were there were racers that knew that and just carried three or four bottom ends <laughs> in their truck. So they're like, ah, well, cracked another one. Let's just swap it out and go again because you could pick up 302s about the way you can pick up LSs now. Go to the junkyard, have 250 bucks in your pocket, and take home your race engine for the next season. Um, now the LS motors way better than the 302 was because those 302s were two bolt main blocks they were weak as crap obviously they cracked all the time and about 550 horsepower is all you could get out of them the 351 truck block you could get about 750 800 before they cracked and the only reason that they were in any and I'm, I'm air quoting here stronger is because the taller deck height made the cam journal further away from the main journal so those two holes were far enough apart where they wouldn't crack and connect as easy as they would with the 302 block. Um, anyway, but this kid was going off all this stuff, but what I remember back then is a 550 horsepower Fox body, like a notchback, would run a 10 second quarter mile, and a 700 horsepower Supra would run an 11.2. And I'm not saying it's because the Supra was a bad car, it's because nobody figured out the IRS yet. Everybody that was making big power on a Supra was doing it with a six-speed, so they were having to shift. Turbos of the late 90s were garbage as far as efficiency was concerned, especially when you're shooting for a thousand horsepower. Uh, you start hitting a thousand horsepower in a Supra in the late 90s, and the only people making those, you know, um, 72, 76, 80 millimeter turbos back then weren't making them for performance cars. They were making them for diesels and generators and stuff like that and we were adapting them to 3 liter, 5 liter, 5.8 liter engines when they were really built for uh, 10 and 17 and uh, you know giant diesel engines running at low RPM so they, they we were adapting turbos that had no business being where we were putting them um, into performance applications because well hell if it made uh, I'm going to quote it in kilowatts, right? So if it made 750 kilowatts in a diesel generator, that's about a thousand horsepower. I can yank that sucker off and throw it on my Supra, Mustang, whatever, and take it to town, see what she does. Um, but because of that, the lag was immense. The turbine housings were way too big. The turbines themselves were way too big. Everything was just wrong for a performance application. And the wastegates weren't designed to handle that. Hell, some of them were internally gated at that size. But um, anyway, that's that's what I got on my 90s rant that everybody forgot about. Those cars are great now, now that we can fix all their flaws. They were kind of terrible in comparison to current cars. All right, hope you guys have a good day and I'll talk to you later, bye.